Welcome back to the Pink Floyd Collector's YouTube channel. So today we're going to look at the Pink Floyd Garden Party at the Crystal Palace Bowl tour program or tour book. This was actually the first ever concert at the Crystal Palace Bowl to feature a pop act as Pink Floyd were considered then. And it was a full day event and quite famous for finishing early and also the weather pretty much ruining the day's proceedings. Now, as we can see here, we've got some quite nice graphics, uh, Pink Floyd, and then an American band called Mountain, uh, The Faces, who were actually enjoying quite a bit of chart success at the time, and Quiver. Now, my tour book here, it's 51 years old, so it's a little bit damaged as it were the first, first page is hanging off page one is an advert for mountains their new album nantucket sleigh ride you've then got uh well this is actually interesting this is a concert ticket for that day's event um as we can see pink floyd were the main act and i don't know whether you can see that just behind in faint writing it repeats the word garden party the garden parties were a, se a series of events that had actually taken place since 1961, but they were typically either jazz or classical music. As we can see here, it says at the bottom, welcome to the first ever pop concert at this famous venue. Enjoy yourselves and it would be nice if you took your litter home with you. The venue was designed by a lead architect called Ian Ritchie. Absolutely no relation to Roger Waters, saxophone player. But he wanted to have this venue in the middle of Crystal Palace Park. He wanted it to both be lively where music was taking place, but then also fit back into nature when it wasn't. So he decided to put a huge lake in front of the stage. Now, Pink Floyd saw this as a artistic challenge. How could they use the lake? to maximise their stage effects. So they actually had an inflatable octopus submerged and at the right time, it would blow itself up, inflate to the amazement of the crowd. But unfortunately, what actually happened was during the day it had been raining, the crowd had got a bit restless, uh, the, the terrain had turned to mud. So eventually uh, some of the fans ended up in the lake also, when the uh, charges went off to inflate the octopus, it ended up killing a lot of the fish. Um, and these weren't regular fish. Some of them were Japanese, koi, uh, apparently quite expensive. So Pink Floyd got a bit of a bad uh, rap on their knuckles for that. And it's kind of gone down as a bit of a folklore story around this concert. But carrying on, uh, we've got quite a nice uh, photo shot of the band. Uh, from a series of photos at that time. And then we've got the faces, which of course included Rod Stewart at the time. We've then got a timetable of events and a nice double fold out picture of the band again. So just confirming the date, Saturday 15th of May, 1971, kicking off with Quiver, then Mountain, then the faces, then Pink Floyd due to take the stage at quarter to six. That is correct. There was actually a curfew because this is a common park. And um, back then, concerts weren't really that big in parks. There was something called the Hyde Park Free Concerts that had taken place. But this one was subject to quite a strict curfew. So the band had to be away, certainly by no later than 8.30. But this was due to close at quarter to eight. Then got a mountain photo shoot, photo poster. An advert for quite a famous venue still to this day, Fairfield Halls in Croydon, with King Crimson, Rory Gallagher on the line up there. And then a quiver. And then quite a nice full page advert for the then new Pink Floyd album, Relics. You have to remember at this time, metal hadn't come out and Pink Floyd had enjoyed a number one album in the UK with Atom Heart Mother. So they then looked backwards to their catalogue to reintroduce people to some of their older music as they were starting to become popular. Those of you that have seen The Source Full of Secrets, Nick Mason's band, will know that Guy Pratt does mention everybody had this album. 
because it was half price compared to everything else. And as you can see here, it was £1.15 at the time. And most typical albums at that time were £2.50. So it was over half price, actually, compared to other albums. But it, its whole intention was to introduce new listeners to the band and some of their pre Atom Heart Mother material. And then another advert for The Faces. And this time, a new album called Long Player. So that's it. A kind of pretty basic program. Uh, again, no real information around the bands as such. Just some nicer uh, pin-up photos. A timetable of events. Um, probably the best thing about this is the uh, front page. The graphics, as it were. There's a nice poster that goes along with this. That you can find online. That's got like, I think these are in green and red uh, but that's quite a nice image as well but that's it pink floyd 1971 tour book at the crystal palace bowl